Christ, I just want to thank everyone at, at Crossroads to make this event possible tonight. And uh, we are blessed to gather and give thanks. And, and I love that song. Isn't it true? I, I need you, Jesus, each and every day, each and every moment. It, it's my privilege to read first from Joel chapter 2, beginning with verse 21. Be not afraid, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be not afraid, O wild animals, for the open pastures are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig trees and the vines yield their riches. Be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in righteousness. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. Our second reading is Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy, and he who goes out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. And now I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful, quiet lives in godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, whom gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle, I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to the, the little ones. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise you. You may be seated. <laughs> Hello. Oh, thank you, Pastor Paul and Pastor Deb. Uh, for your invitation and for hosting us tonight, and Pastor Chad, Pastor Greg. It's an honor to celebrate uh, this service. And uh, one thing I sense is the Father's delight in heaven, that we are gathered around the table of his word. And this week, I got a call from my mom, and she said, when are you coming home? I said, I don't know, Ma. <laughs> There's lots of things going on at church. I don't know if I'll make it. And then I could sense on the other line, what? And it's my mother and father's desire that we all come home for Thanksgiving and every holiday in between. <laughs> and it's their longing that we're all together as one. And this is our heavenly father's desire for all of us as Christians to come together, to be nourished by his word, and then to go out into the world. And this is ultimately thanks, what Thanksgiving's all about, coming together as family to give thanks to God. And isn't it beautiful when the table's set and everyone is at peace and we're eating and we say, oh, thank you, Mother, thank you, Father, please pass the potatoes, please pass the cranberry sauce. Okay, it doesn't always look like that. <laughs> but that's the goal. The goal is that we are united as families in Christ Jesus. But to get there takes a little bit of work and effort. So maybe you're coming here tonight, you still have to cook a meal. You still have to prepare your soul for the in-laws. <laughs> All these things are going through your heart and mind. And just give those to the Lord. And I'm one of 12, I have 11 siblings, and all the names start with M. And it seems like, yes, it's true, it's like the Brady Bunch times two. But whenever there's a big, celebration. We're cleaning the house to the last possible moment. And it's chaotic. It's crazy. And on one particular occasion, I forget which holiday we were preparing for, my mom had sent out the orders to us, her troops. You clean the downstairs, you clean the upstairs, you vacuum the upstairs, you vacuum the downstairs. You scrub the toilets, you do the dishes. And my mom then had her work cut out for her. She was to cook and clean the kitchen. Now, as she began to clean the kitchen and cook, she was diligently doing her work. And my siblings and I, what were we doing? Take a guess. Okay. We're not the holy family. So... We were arguing, of course, why do I have to scrub the toilets and why does Melissa get to do the dishes? And we argued and argued, the chores didn't get done. And eventually, my mom reached the breaking point. And how did we know it? She, she said I could say this, by the way. She said, if I leave this house, what would you do? In that angry tone. And us kids decided, okay, let's pull it together and pretend to be friends with one another and get the chores done. And we, did, we got the chores done and the house was ready. But what led my mother to her breaking point? It was our ungrateful actions. We weren't grateful 
that she was cooking and preparing all these treats for us because we were so concerned about what we had to do. And this ingratitude is being blind, blind as a bat, not being able to see God's work and those who participate in God's work. We get so focused on what we need to do that we forget about God, forget about our neighbor. We're called to love God and our neighbor. Now, my mother, her anger was justified. She needed to do that. And this anger we see just before the gospel passage I read today. Now you think, Jesus, he's grateful, he's thanking the Father. But what happened just before that? Well, Jesus was preaching to the crowds. And he performed many miracles in the cities. And it was his great hope that people would repent and turn to Christ. Turn a new life, turn a new leaf, excuse me, and begin again. But is that what happened? No. Not everyone who saw the miracles the Lord had worked repented. And what did Jesus feel? That ingratitude. And it made him angry. And what did he say? He said, Woe to you, Chorasane. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloths, sackcloths and ashes. But I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on that day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon, Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, you have, been exalt, have you been exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. Jesus was angry because the people did not take his message seriously. And they continued on their daily life. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, that's not the end. Thank goodness. That shows, though, Jesus' reaction. And it's not because he was upset because they didn't notice him in the work he was doing. He was upset because they weren't receiving salvation. Jesus longs for all of us to be made new and to experience the life, the depth, and breath of the Holy Spirit to turn a new leaf. And this is what God is calling us as churches in Lakeville We don't want God to say, woe to you of Lakeville. We want God to say, God the Father to say, praise God. This is a city that's set on fire for Christ. And how do we get there? By following Jesus and his example. What does Jesus do with that anger? He turns to the Father. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little ones. And in Luke's passage, this same account, he says, in that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father. It's the Holy Spirit that comes, that allows us to be grateful. And Jesus turns to the Father and he gives thanks in particular for his disciples who are living the gospel, who are following his ways. And we sense this joy of the Father's heart that comes to us through the Spirit in Jesus Christ. This is what thanksgiving's all about. We are to give thanks to the Father for having revealed the very message of salvation through the Son. So Jesus models how we are to give thanks. And how does he do this? One, when he's with the crowd, he's giving thanks out loud. He's making known what he's thankful for. 
Two, he's directing that thanks to the Father. And three, he makes it clear what he's thankful for. It's for his disciples that they have received the message of salvation and heeded it. And so he's thankful for his disciples and for the Father's work that has begun in them. But what does that look like? Well, tomorrow, set aside some time to give thanks as families. And not just thanks, but I'm, I'm grateful for my pet, Raphael. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but... <laughs> or I'm grateful for that, this food on the table, which is good. But take it another step further. I'm grateful for the Lord working in my life. I'm grateful for forgiveness. I'm grateful for you, Mom, for not only all that you've cooked, <laughs> but also for your love, your care. I'm thankful for you, Dad, for all the sacrifices you make for us. I just want to say thank you for that. And watch what happens. When that happens, there's an opening made for the Holy Spirit to come down. And it makes that table, everyone surrounding that table, light. I'm part of a, a group of priests called the Companions of Christ, and we occasionally have dinner together on Lord's Day, on Saturdays. And when we get together, at the end of the meal, we give thanks. We give thanks, and it's particular, a particular grace. And it's amazing what happens. The conversation deepens. And we can sense the Holy Spirit. So a priest will say, I'm just so grateful I had this beautiful couple. They're following the church's teachings. They're happy to come to church. And they're just full of life. And I'm grateful for that. Or another would say, I'm grateful for, you know, my brother over here who helped me pray through a difficult circumstance. And when that happens... The Holy Spirit comes and the labors of life become light. You can sense the Holy Spirit. And this is what draws us together tonight as we prepare to enter into the chaos of our family life. We're called to bring Jesus the message of salvation. And it's simple, it happens just through thanksgiving. And so I encourage all of you to spend some time thinking about what you're grateful to God for. So when it comes time, tomorrow, it's not, um, I'm grateful for my pet Raphael. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit will come. And this is how we really want to prepare. And not just cleaning the house, we've got to do that not just preparing ourselves mentally for the in-laws. I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> but it's preparing for the coming of the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit who helps us give thanks. And now maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know what I'm grateful for. It's been a tough year. Maybe you've lost your job or lost a loved one or school's difficult. This is where you pray to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to see what to be thankful for. And watch the Holy Spirit work. And it may be something as simple as, I'm just grateful to be here and that I'm made in the image and likeness of God. So we give thanks tonight for the very message of salvation for the very word of God made flesh. We are grateful that Jesus saved us from our sins. And he longs that all of us may eat at the one table, at the table of his word and of his body. He longs for all of us to be united, to become one body in Christ. And it starts here by giving thanks and by praising him. Amen.